This is Texans TV. We take a trip to Sparta, Tennessee to get to know a little bit more about our head coach. Football was more than just a game. It was kind of a way of life for us. And we enter the deep slant with running back Philip Lindsay. Coming up on Texans 360. We are ready to rock in his rock and roll. Hey, greatness today, man. Touchdown, Texans. think you've seen it all. There's always something else. They want that content, we gonna give it to them. Welcome into Texans 360. I'm your host, DP Sidley. We got a great show for you tonight. Head coach David Culley, you've heard of him, right? Did you know that he was from Sparta? Because we are gonna go back and show you some of his roots, where he grew up. Also, Mark Ingram, Philip Lindsay, we catch up with the running backs. But first, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, and Roy Lopez, our rookie defensive lineman, he's featured on this very first episode of the new season of Pro Texans. Check it out. Hola, Texans fans. I'm HTC Rose, and I'll be your host for this Puro Texan season. Puro Texans is all about bringing attention to the thriving Latino community here in Houston and our Hispanic fan base from all over the world. For our primer episodio, we're starting at the root of Houston, Texas with defensive lineman Roy Lopez. Roy is a Latino of Mexican-American descent from the border state of Arizona and is one of only 24 Latinos in the NFL. With the Houston Texans season in full swing, we're meeting Roy after practice to get to know Nuestro Jugador. With the 195th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Roy Lopez, defensive tackle, Arizona. All right, so it's your rookie season. You are drafted by U of A in the sixth round, and you managed to get your first sack in your first game as a Houston Texan. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, going through the draft process is, is something that, you know, is a very long process. You're just anxious to find out where you're going, you know, you, and, uh, and I remember I just looked down my phone and it had a number on it and said Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas. And I was like, oh man, it's about to go down. We're about to make you a Houston Texan. And so, uh, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, no, you've earned it, man. Yeah, you've earned it. How has Houston been treating you so far and what are you liking about it? Yeah, hey, Houston's showed me nothing but love. And that's, that's, you know, really what I like about it is because um, coaches have showed love to me, players have showed love to me, the city showed love to me. Um, you know, the fans are great. That, you know, that was that was another reason why I was happy to come here. Going back to your first sack, you have a celebratory dance that everyone absolutely loves. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind it? It was like a, a normal celebration. It was nothing, you know, just kind of celebrate my teammates, high five, you know, and, uh, and you know, it just came to my mind, you know, I had, you know, a little, a little salsa dance or, or something, you know, to connect with the, connect with the fans because, you know, it's the same thing at New Mexico State. You know, they have a lot of Latino fans and that's, you know, uh, I just wanted to connect with them. That's definitely something that I picture in the future in Houston to be able to uh, do the dance and, and uh, you know, make a play and, and look in the stands and see, see people doing the dance with me, back at me. So, um, I love it. I love it. Well, you do know you're going to have to teach it to me now, right? But I like to do it just for fun. So I just hit it with once right, two left, and then I finish with a right, you know, and I like to look at my look at my teammates. In the gun, here's the snap, pocket collapsing, there's pressure, here comes Roy Lopez, and the rookie has a sack. Big Roy brings down the quarterback. As you know, familia is very important to the Latinx and Hispanic culture. Can you tell us a little bit about your family? You know, all of them have the, the, the same background of, of a hardworking family, you know, so, um, Thankfully, I had them to look up to on both sides um, and, and just kind of model my life around it, you know. So, so when I say hard work and, and, you know, I don't I don't like to use the word, you know, this is hard. I don't like to use the word at practice. Oh, this is this is a hard practice because at the end of the day, I get to play a sport. You know, I get to play, you know, for my living, you know. So when it comes down to it, what I want people to say about me is that I was a hard worker, but also I showed love to people. So we've gotten to know you, we've gotten to know a little bit about your family, so now let's talk about football. You are a part of the 1.4% of Latino players in the NFL. When you hear that stat, I mean it's amazing. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I hear it in, in 
I take pride in it. That's something that you know, I feel deeply in my heart. That's a, that's a, a stat that I heard of in the process of, of getting ready for, for the draft. And, and uh, I just want I just want to share it. You know, that's all. I just want to share, share my experiences. I want to bring people to understand, you know, where we come from and, and how important, you know, our background is and uh, uh, introduce the dance to people. So uh, definitely. So Hispanic Heritage Month is around the corner. What does that mean to you? It's going to be big, you know, and, and it goes back to the to the, the stat of being 1.4 percent, you know, and, and bringing awareness to that, and just just you know being able to, to thrive in that and show that you know we can do it too, you know, and and continue to just have fun with it and, and be able to to experience this this game and the love with the fans and and, and you know just represent well and represent our tradition, all of our traditions and our culture and just everything that, that goes into being a Latino. Thank you so much for representing our culture so well doing what you do. We're so excited to have you and we wish you the best of luck this season. It was great meeting you and remember, Puro, Puro Texas. Texas. Can't wait to see more of those sax celebrations from Roy Lopez, another guy that's not a stranger to sax, Whitney Merciless. He's also not a stranger to social media because he puts out some amazing posts, some great content. He takes some fantastic trips. We caught up with Whitney and asked him about some of his recent social media posts. Take a look. All right, Whitney, you're great on social media, but uh, you know, you've taken it to another level. And I think this one really expressed what a lot of people were thinking. <laughs> How it's gonna feel to travel again. Yep. Oh, you're traveling again. How does it feel uh, to actually be out there again? It's liberating. It feels nice. Oh my gosh, just to get away from like the stale, same stale, monogamous environment. Yeah. And uh, just to be able to get out and see the world and actually interact with different people all from all walks of life. It's awesome. I know you and I had talked about off-season plans back in mm. 2019, yeah. before COVID, yeah, before exactly. any of us even knew what COVID was. And I'm happy to see you back out there, and I'm very oh, yeah. jealous as well. St. Lucia? Oh, was, yeah, that was amazing. All right, what was this? How did you decide to go to St. Lucia, and, and what did you think? Well, my girlfriend decided, hey, hey, we should take a trip. The only place that was oh, pretty much open for, you know, the, like with the whole COVID thing and all that. So we went to St. Lucia, and I uh, didn't realize how amazing and magical it was. Um, so the, I forget the name of the hotel. It's like Jade Mountain Jade or something Mountain. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yo, they, so... Inside the rooms are is pretty much like it's all open. I mean, it's just exposed to elements pretty much. Um, so birds are flying in. You can have like bugs fly in. I mean, you just got the nice little cool breeze coming in. And uh, there's a pool, as you saw right there. The infinity uh, pool. Yep. Yes. And you're just sitting there, just looking at just nothing but nature. I was like, man, you know what? I want to come back here. <laughs> All right, so any other big trips that you did end up taking this off season? Yeah, I actually went to uh, Puerto Vallarta. Vallarta. Uh, yeah, You're that was awesome. One, yeah. That was awesome. So that yeah, was only like a two hour trip from Houston. Yeah. Uh, turns out they stayed there for about seven days and uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Now, the food down there is just so fresh, so good, uh, so authentic. It's like, I just want to go down there for some Mexican food. That's it. That's it. I just want to touch Mexican food down there. If anyone knows food, it's you, Whitney. <laughs> I feel like you're you're quite the foodie. Oh yeah. All right. So this one, um, <laughs> your dog. Oh. Is snap. this Rocky? Yeah, that's this Rocky. Is Rocky. Yeah. And, and poor Rocky has like a bandaid yeah. on his tail. He had this like big old on. like growth going on on his oh, tail, no. so I had to take him to the uh, to the vet to get it removed. So. That was a very unpleasant, you can imagine. Um, so they pulled out like, I, I guess all this like dried up pus or whatever. So then antibiotics, all that. And um, for some reason he just wanted to lick the antibiotics off all the time. So we had to put on a Band-Aid on, on his tail so you wouldn't like touch it. Uh, try to put the t-shirt as yeah. you see over it. There's a backwards t-shirt on him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. You're a good dog parent. Uh, it didn't work out. Didn't no, work out. No, didn't. Yeah. Try to put the cone on him. <laughs> so put the cone on him and he would find a way to like scratch it off. But the funniest thing is this kid ran into everything. <laughs> with a cone? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We catch up with two of our running backs. That's next on Texans 360. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would you choose? 
Lord have mercy. That's a tough one. One meal for the rest of life, it'd probably have to be surf and turf. Ain't nothing better than a great Wagyu steak with a beautiful South African lobster tail. Fried, broiled, grilled, however you like it, but you can't lose with the surf and turf. Dream vacation location. It would have to be right now, it'd have to be somewhere in Asia. I haven't been to Asia yet, so it would have to be somewhere in Asia. Don't know where exactly, but somewhere in Asia. Who has the best fits on the team? Other than myself? Me, of course. Can't put anybody ahead of me. Mark Ingram, the second. Best fits on the team. Stay tuned. Who has the best shoe game on the team? Mark Ingram, the second. How can I? I'm a shoe head, a sneaker head. In the worst, best type of way. So I had to say myself, again, Mark Ingram the second. Although there's many others with great shoe game, none better than myself. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Texans 360. And you know what, Mark Ingram, so hilarious. But I wonder what his teammate, Philip Lindsay, would have to say about some of those answers. Those two like to go back and forth. They're good friends on and off the field. And I had a chance to catch up with the Texans' new running back this week. Take a look. It's a Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. I'm chatting with running back Philip Lindsay, year four. Phil, how's it been for you? I know you've never played outside of Colorado, but you've got some games under your belt. How have you adjusted to the locker room and just this team and just getting back on the field healthy again? Yeah, thanks for having me today. Um, the locker room is great. You know, this is the first year that I've ever been around as many veterans as, as we have here in Houston. Uh, so it's great to see a different uh, perspective of things and how people go about their business and learning from them. And just the atmosphere is just, you know, different, which is which is a great thing because you come in here, you handle your business and you kind of go home. And a majority of us have uh, a family at the house, you know, kids, a wife. So it's really good. We're all in the same situation. So we kind of understand each other a little bit different than a locker room that's kind of young and new to the game and um, happy-go-lucky in a way. But here it's kind of everybody knows what they have to do uh, in handling business uh, up front and at home. So it's, it's, it's a great atmosphere. All right, so with Tim Kelly running the offense, he yeah. talks about the hot hand. Yeah. And, you know, I want to know, like, as a running back, is it – do you, how do you look at that? Because is it easier to get into a rhythm when you've got when you're getting all those reps, or is it kind of nice to sit back and watch someone else, and then you can kind of go yeah. in and, and, and see the field a little bit differently? Yeah, no, you, it's a two-headed sword with that. Um, you know, it's it's always good when you can get the reps because over time you start to develop, you get comfortable, you start to to, to see tendencies in the game, and then you can start you can make the moves and, and make a couple of risks because you're going to get. Uh, those opportunities and sometimes sitting back and, and, and watching them observing and stuff and, and letting things play out is good as well you know I think it's how you take it and uh, it's a long season it's a long season and you know when you do have talented runbacks like like we do um, you definitely want that person who does have the high hand to get his opportunity you know and, and so you just kind of you have to be their eyes and you have to, to, to do your part and when you go in there try to make the best of your your, your reps and go from there because you know everybody's gonna have their time and so when it's not your time you know it's, it's it's about observing and taking those mental reps and doing what you can to help the team and when it is your time you need to be ready you need to be ready and you need to go out there and be able to get that high hand too so uh, hopefully I can get you know start sparking that up a little bit and try to get some wins you know try to be on top of the division so you know that's that's our goal always a pleasure Philip hey stop by anytime I appreciate you guys having me the McNairs are giving back. That's next on Texans 360. Texans 360 rolls on. The McNair family always doing great things in the community. Mission of Yahweh is one of the causes that's very near and dear to their hearts. And recently, they made a very special contribution. We had a really awesome day today with a new playground that we opened up. We dedicated it. It's an exciting time for our kids. We love uh, being able to do special things for them. Being able to offer a playground is just about as good as it gets. The 
mission of Yahweh helps uh, women and children who are homeless, and we try to help them get their lives turned around. They come here with a very difficult situation in crisis, and the goal is to get them stabilized so that they can go on and be independent and not ever become homeless again. That's our goal. We always want to thank the McNairs and all their longtime involvement with the mission. Just special people. Thank you to all who have helped with this. This playground looks incredible. It made me a little teary-eyed when I got when I walked up, just going, "Oh my goodness!" The good times that are going to be had on this playground by so many children that just brings so much happiness, and that's what we want for all of you. Giving back to the community and supporting amazing organizations like the Mission is so important to our family, and it's been a true honor to be part of this work here. And we're proud to be able to continue our partnership through this new playground. One, two, three, We get to know a little bit more about our head coach by visiting his hometown. That's coming up on Texans 360. One final segment of Texans 360, head coach David Culley. It's his first year as the Houston Texans head coach, and we love having him in the building. He's so much fun to get to know. But where did he come from? He grew up in Sparta, Tennessee. We went back to his hometown to get to know a little more. To know how the Texans will be built, you must first know David Culley. And to know him, we take you to the city that built him. Located 80 miles from Nashville, Tennessee, with a population of 5,029, is the city of Sparta. Bluegrass, beautiful waterfalls, and White County High School are a few ways of describing it. But when telling any story, it's best to hear from those who know it best. Sparta is basic rural America. It's, it's the place that you want to raise your family and, and grow, a, grow a home. And it's a place that, that considers God, family, country, and then sports comes pretty close behind that. It was a very close-knit town, not just with my family, but with everybody in the town, from people at the high school, people in businesses. Everybody knew everybody. And it was like we were all family to a certain degree. On Roberts and North Carter Street, near Riverside Park, David Culley's childhood began. This is the street basically where he grew up at, and I always, we always kidded each other, said, okay man, we from North Carter. He said, yeah, North Carter Strong, this is our area right here. We maintain North Carter. So he was proud to be from this street. Even though there wasn't much here, but still, it was a lot to us. At an early age, David got involved in sports, where friendships were made, and character began to be developed. He was the type of guy that one day, he's gonna be a productive person for the community. He's just a good kid. And then at the ball field, people leave, kids leave their gloves on the benches and he'd always say, hey guys, whose gloves? Don't forget your gloves. David's character in many ways was molded by his parents because you know, I've never been around his parents that they weren't positive and upbeat and encouraging. I've never, felt like David was doing anything other than what he felt like was best for the team. White County High School is the only high school in our county and it serves all of our county as the local high school. Football was more than just a game. It was kind of a way of life for us. And it wasn't just the football, but it was basketball, it was baseball, it was all the other sports. It is a, a very sports oriented town with a lot of history. D. Harris is known in the town of Sparta as a legend, a title well-deserved after being the head coach of the high school football team for 19 years. Following a successful coaching career, in 2002, the school named the field in his honor. One year later, he was inducted into the White County Sports Hall of Fame. I got coached the right way, I like to tell everybody, because he was a wonderful man, not only that, a tremendous coach, but a better human being. And uh, those things kind of rubbed off on not only me, but everybody that played for him. And I try to make sure that in my profession now with where I'm at, that I try to do the same thing to the people that I coach. 
D. Harris was a great coach. To this day, what he taught me is, was discipline and hard work because if you were not disciplined, D would let you know, but he would do it in a, such a way that it wasn't to chastise you, but he brought the best out of you through the way he communicated to you. With D. Harris and a good supporting cast, David began to build a legacy of his own at White County High. Staying busy with sports and school, David earned a good reputation with the people of Sparta. There's nothing that I saw any kind of uh, sporting event that he couldn't excel in. I mean, he was the quarterback on a football team, he was a point guard on a basketball team. He played the game the way it was supposed to be played, and so people looked up to him, even on the opposing sides. When he was a senior, he would became the first player ever to be named the Associated Press as State Player of the Week for both offense and defense, and he did it in consecutive weeks. And I don't think anybody's ever done that since then. It was Sparta, Tennessee, where David would form bonds that would last a lifetime and develop his character. Today, he is in the White County Sports Hall of Fame, next to the legendary D. Harris. But his impact in the town of Sparta is far from finished. Back when I was in Sparta, Tennessee, everything I am today has come from that town, those people, and you know, you always hear it takes a, takes a village, you know, to, to, to raise someone. I'm a perfect example of that, and that happened for me back in Sparta, Tennessee. That's going to do it for Texans 360. If you want to see more, be sure to check out HoustonTexans.com, but you know what, we're on YouTube, we're on TikTok, we're on social media. We are on all the things. You cannot miss us. But we're going to miss you because that's going to do it for us. Thank you to everyone for watching. And as always, go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.